Hello my friends, my name is Maltena and you're watching After Effects Effects A to Z series on Motionworks. And today's episode is sponsored by the word channel, which will bring us two plugins that we'll be using today, and those are Channel Combiner, which is the main focus of this tutorial, and Channel Blur, which is the plugin that we already discussed. So let's just jump right in, I'll explain what's happening here. I will be showing you an example of how Channel Combiner can be used, along with Channel Blur in this case, on two examples. The first one is called Piano and the other one is called Boy. As you can see, I've got two uh, viewers opened. The one always shows to the topmost composition, which in this case is Piano, and the bottommost composition, which is Piano Precomp. At this point, uh, both those precomps have no effects applied to them. The piano precomp just has the footage precomposed, which is then put into the piano comp. Uh, and the same thing happens over here with those two precomps. So, let's start the magic. What is channel combiner? Let me just apply it to the footage and you will start to see some nasty stuff happening. Well, to be brief about the plugin, it basically takes the channels from the footage you apply it to and changes them to a different sort of a channel output. All the modes we can choose from are available in this From drop-down menu, and to be honest, the only options I use are RGB to YUV and the reverse of that, which is YUV to RGB. There's also an option to use a second layer as a source for combining the channels, but I haven't used that also. But just to make this tutorial go through all the options, I can just show you uh, what those do. For example, right now we are transferring the RGB values to HLS, which is Hue Light Saturation, which you're probably already familiar with. So right now the red channel corresponds to Hue, green channel corresponds to lightness and the blue channel corresponds to saturation. So basically if we take two copies of this channel combiner and the second copy will be set to reverse the process, so go from HLS to RGB, we'll get the same result as if we wouldn't use the effects to begin with. But the cool thing is that we can sandwich some other effects in between those two channel combiners. For example, let's use channel blur, just because I'm lazy and don't want to change the keyword in here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and, for example, since we know which channel corresponds to uh, which HLS value, we can blur a given channel. So for example, if I would like to blur out the saturation of all the colors in the footage, I would have to play with the blue channel. So let's just go to the channel blur and blur uh, the blue channel. I'll, I'm just going to click the repeat edge pixels and let's just go ahead and blur that. Uh, it's a slight difference, we can't really say that's, that anything happens, so let's just undo that and try playing with the lightness. Okay, so that will be the green channel. And this will really blur the image out because our eyes are actually more sensitive to lightness than there are to hue and saturation. Just take a look what happens. We can see all the hue and all the saturation intact, but we're actually blurring the lightness, so we're blurring the actual contrast in the image, making it unreadable to the eye through the lightness. We can only figure out what's going on through the hue and saturation. Okay, maybe not most useful functionality, but that's how it works. But hey, this tutorial is about making things useful, so let's just make Channel Combiner work for us. But before we do, let's just take a look at the two parameter, which is an active at the moment. How do we make it active? Well, in order to be able to choose from that dropdown, we need to choose only one channel. As you can see, we've got three channels in here, RGB, which are then converted to HLS and so on and so forth. But these are actually only one channel. So when I'm going to pick one, for example, red, I can take the original red channel and transcribe it to lightness or transcribe it to hue or transcribe it to saturation. Okay, we've got that covered so I don't want to get into all of these modes because even though I don't like saying that something is useless, but like I said, I haven't used those modes 
ever. All I usually do is pick from those three and to be completely honest, most of the time only those two. So let's focus on those. What is YUV? Well, this is a uh, color encoding standard that we don't really use natively in uh, computer graphics but it was designed for a television broadcast. The Y contains the most information and is responsible for keeping the luminance or, or the lightness values of the image, while the U and V are just two parameters that are smartly multiplied with each other to create the color. So basically we can say that they are like hue and saturation, but it's not like they correspond specifically to one another. So. Uh, Let's just not go there. Okay, let's just get rid of all these effects and start from scratch. Channel Combiner is like a uh, surgical tool. And since there are not many surgeons among visual effects and motion graphic artists, Channel Combiner does not get used a lot. And I would really like to see a change in that. So let me show you how I use it in my work. If we're going to zoom in on this area, for example, we can see that the image is pretty blocky. This was shot with the DSLR, which is heavily compressed, so this is totally expected. Let's say we want to key out this footage. And remember, this is not a tutorial about keying, however, it's a good place to use Channel Combiner. So let's just apply key light to this footage and just pick a color. Okay, this one looks nice. Well, the footage is already keyed out quite nicely, but we can see the nasty edge. The way to deal with this usually is to um, go to the screen mat and maybe shrink it a little bit. Uh, we can do like minus one, and that actually does a pretty good job. We can also pre-blur this a little bit but then again we get the blockiness and we lose a lot of detail in the original image depending of course on how much we are blurring not to mention the fact that the edge is shifting we can of course try some choking simple choker or matte choker but these are all methods that usually mess up with our details take a look at the hair it doesn't look as good as it did before right so what do we do? Let's just reset key light and grab another color sample. Okay, that's good. Let's just go to the pre-comp and try our channel combiner, which is the main focus of this tutorial. So I'm going to apply channel combiner to the footage, set the mode to RGB to YUV. And since I know that the UV are now represented by the green and blue channels, I can apply channel blur and just repeat each pixels, blur even one pixel in the green and in the blue channel and then apply channel combiner again to reverse the process and voila, take a look at the difference that it made. This is with the channel combiner and channel blur and this without, with and without, with and without. And I'm not only talking about the edge here, take a look at the at this piece of hair. We can see that it's pretty blocky. It's not being keyed out, so it's not being treated by the key light, but still, if we use those effects, it does a pretty nice job of, of smoothing out the color channels without touching the contrast, so the luminance values, which our eyes are more sensitive to, because we are not blurring the red channel. Again, red is now responsible for the Y, which is luminance so there you go quite a useful trick and now we can go ahead and maybe shrink it a little bit with our screen mat maybe negative one and we still have all the detail in the hair and uh let's take a look at this piece in here for example let's just go to the pre-comp and turn the effects off take a look at this what a nasty nasty edge and this is already with the shrinking if we turn the shrinking off, it looks even worse. Just take a look at this. Nasty. If we turn the effects back on, looks okay. And now with the shrinking, even better. 
Okay, so that's one example, and it pretty much sums up everything I wanted to show you. The same thing happens in the boy precomp. However, over there, we can see what a huge influence uh, this technique has over the this spilling process. So let's just go ahead and pick the boy comp over here, move over here and choose boy precomp. We can now move to those uh, two compositions in here, and we're gonna do basically the same thing. So we just go to the boy comp apply key light yep and choose a green color somewhere close to his body probably would be uh, okay and just take a look at his face this doesn't look nice and I'm not even talking about, about the edge here because again this is not a tutorial about keying it's about channels so let's just go to the boy precomp and apply channel combiner do the same trick so change RGB to YUV apply channel blur with repeat edge pixels this time I think we have to pump it up quite high maybe up to 10 and then apply channel combiner again and reverse the process so take a look at this part of his face this is with the effects applied and this is without made a huge difference but then again uh, we do have a lot of halo around the edge which can make uh, the keying a little bit more difficult so how can we fix that without actually focusing on the keying it would be kind of cool to have sort of two separate passes the first pass to treat the inside of the alpha channel basically the inside of his head and his shirt his neck uh, and the other one to treat the very edge because everything works better on the edges where when the values are smaller that's obvious but then again it doesn't really treat the face the way we like so uh, how can we achieve that now please focus on this part of the image because in here we're gonna get some crazy results okay uh, let's use channel blur and we can pump it up quite high maybe even up to 20 so we can remove the artifacts really nicely over here uh, but now we need to use some sort of keying to restrict the area only to our subject so I'm going to use color range in this case and basically just pick a few samples uh, let's just grab this and this and this and that's pretty much it of course since we have blurred it quite big now all the green information is spilling out and this is what and that's actually what's causing uh, the nasty edge in here so what we do now is we use simple choker just to shrink the edge to the inside and then we can use CC composite which we will discuss in future episodes to bring back the original contents of the layer so we're going to set the blending mode to behind and we're going to turn off RGB only so right now we have this area treated with our channel combiner and channel blur and everything else that is being added at this point is the untreated original image just to be elegant in what we're doing I would like to add a little bit of a blur to this edge so I'm going to use channel blur again with repeat edge pixels selected and blurring the alpha channel just ever so slightly and now apply CC composite and when I've done that I can again do the same trick with the channel combiner and channel blur sandwich in between so I'm just going to duplicate those effects move them down and in here I'm just going to change the blurriness level to about one or maybe two and that way I've got a nice smooth edge and I don't have any artifacts on his face and now I can continue with my keying in the main composition so okay that's it for this episode of After Effects A to Z effects on Motionworks my name is Maltanen Remember to check out my website at maltanon.com where you'll find free Adobe After Effects tutorials and some top-notch and cheap products. 
And also remember to check out my training here at Motionworks called Making It Look Great 5, a kick-ass design and production techniques for Adobe After Effects. Once again, thanks for watching. Happy After Effecting.